He says calling a tree a tree proves creation. I say if your entire faith rests on etymology, wait till you hear what the Germans call a glove. It's a <laughs> hand shoe. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Shut up and sit down, you big ball f Please subscribe. If you're in the US of A, listen up. This one's specifically for you. Don't let my outfit fool you, I'm not a local. But dealing with subscriptions, rising bills, and confusing budgets makes everyone feel like they're juggling too much at once, no matter where you're from. And today's sponsor, Rocket Money, is here to help. I've gone Texas. Why? It doesn't matter. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that lets you manage subscriptions, lower bills, make custom budgets, and grow your savings all in one place. You can see every subscription you signed up to in one list and cancel the ones that don't want anymore with just a few taps. Much easier than trying to remember them all while riding off into the sunset on your horse. Or whatever the Americans do in their spare time, I got no idea. Rocket Money can even help you negotiate bills. Internet. Oh, hang on, that's an odd one. Internet. Cable. Phone. Their teams deal with the awkward phone calls so you don't have to sit around waiting like you're guarding a campfire. Again, I have no idea what Americans do for fun. But if you want more control over your spending, you can create a custom budget in seconds. Rocket Money shows you where your money's heading, sends alerts for upcoming charges, and helps you stay on track. Take control of your finances today. Just scan the QR code, click the link in the description to get started for free. Right, America, I'll leave you to it. I think I've embarrassed myself enough for one day. Ye bloody ha! Howdy, partners. Welcome to the hold. I can't do the accent, Pam. I'm sitting under some trees. Why do I call them trees? Because that's what they are? Why aren't they called something else? Why a tree? Well, the word originated from the old English words trio and trio, but I'm guessing that's not what you mean. For some strange reason, that's what all of you call them. All of you at the sound of my voice, here's what I know. I call them trees and you call them trees. You're not calling those trees based on what Darwin said. You're calling them trees because... Because that's what they are. And can you please stop saying the word trees? It's starting to sound weird. We know you love trees. That's why you're dressed like one. <laughs> Do you know what's always confused me? This. People who wear high-vis vests over camouflage. Do you want to be seen or not? God said. Ah, well, if God said, that changes the entire trajectory of this video, doesn't it? I thought you were just one of those tree hugger people. <laughs> After he called light, light, and darkness, darkness, what you call night and what you call dark, that's what I call night, and that's what I call dark. So does everyone else worldwide. Far be it from me to be disagreeable, but not everybody in the world. Here in Wales, we call dark to each, and night is Norse. So, uh, yeah. Well, I call that night. Why do you call it that? Well, I would have thought that was obvious even to a young Earth creationist. It's because you speak English. And in English, the word we use to describe darkness is darkness. Allow myself to introduce myself. Genesis chapter 1. God said, let there be an expanse between the waters. It's a ball of water. And he cuts it in two. And the atmosphere goes this way. You have an atmosphere. A lot of water in it. And the water beneath it. So far, no, no dirt. Nope. We're just pulling it apart right now. It's a ball of water. Well, for a young earth creationist, that's certainly a creative way of describing it. But it sounds less like cosmology and more like an impossible magic trick. I mean, where did this giant ball of water come from in the first place? Now, if you want to talk about how the earth actually formed, you have to talk about gravity. Our planet wasn't born from water. It was born from dust and gas swirling around a young sun over millions of years. And the oceans came much, much later. According to, according to the atheists, sat down under a tree, Moses, 
and he figured this out on his own, well, every last one of you called it the same thing Moses called it. Did Moses sit under a tree? I don't know how he found the time, especially as he was busy carving the Ten Commandments into stone and part in the Red Sea, which I always thought was a euphemism for doing the dirty deed during. Look, it doesn't matter what I thought, but I do think, though, that he's getting Moses confused with Sir Isaac Newton, which tells me that he's really gone the extra mile with the research for this video. <laughs> but you don't believe in it. Well, why are you calling it all these things? The same thing Genesis called it, the Genesis writer called it, if you don't believe it. Wait, so we're not allowed to speak English unless we believe the Earth is only 6,000 years old? Well, that hardly seems fair. And unlike you, I wasn't born in the stupid tree. Nor did I fall out of said tree and hit my head on every branch on the way down. What the hell are you on about? 6,000 years ago, English didn't even exist. Moses would have spoken Hebrew. And Mrs. Moses, well, she would have obviously spoken Hebrew. Good morning, Hebrews and Shebrews. Now we got water underneath it because he hasn't done anything with that yet. Watch. Be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. And he called the dry ground. Are you all ready for this? Land. Ah, somebody's been watching the Ten Commandments movie, I see. I've seen it as well. I went to Catholic school and I ate the burst your bubble, but it wasn't a documentary. Moses didn't actually speak English, like I just said. Atheist or believer, what do you call the dirt? We call that land. God saw it was good. And now we get to the trees. Hang on a second, we'll get back to the trees now in a minute, because trust me, Phil, there's a lot I don't believe about what you've said so far. You're not by any chance out there foraging for those, you know, special mushrooms, eh? God said, let the land, you call it land and I call it land, produce vegetation, put leaves, trees on the land that bear fruit Apples, oranges, peaches, oak trees, acorns, fruit, 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 fruit coming out of fruit. Well, you call it. That's what Moses called it in, in the Genesis account, by the way. Right, I need to think through this because Phil is confusing me so much, I just tried to take a sip of water from my phone. No, Moses wouldn't have called it fruit because he didn't speak English. And what the actual fudge has Moses got to do with Genesis 1? He was around in the 13th to 14th century BCE. He finally gets to us the first living things he created. Well, okay then, so trees aren't living things? Fair enough. The difference, though, between the biblical account and the scientifically proven account of life's beginning is about four billion years of incredibly complicated chemistry and biology. You were struggling to keep your fantasy about biblical creation straight, and I'm at the point now where I'm just going to call it what it is, because it sounds very much like at any point in this video, we're going to hear you say something along the lines of speaking English proves God is real because he invented it. I really hope you say it. <laughs> you get over to the uh, verse 20. Uh-oh, got some more coming. What's next, Lord? Let the water, a lot of it, team with living creatures, it does. Let birds fly above the earth. Wait a minute. Where'd we get this name, bird? What do you call them? Well, I call them birds as well. Everyone who speaks English does, Phil. Now, while bird is the common English word, scientific classification uses Latin-derived names. So that throws another spanner in the young earth creationist works, doesn't it? The word bird comes from the Latin word avis. Scientists and ornithologists worldwide use it, regardless of their native language. This is just nuts. Now, when I used to watch you on Duck Dynasty, I figured out you weren't the sharpest tool in the box, and how the hell you became a multi Millionaire is beyond me. But come on, really? God said, let the water team with living creatures and let birds fly over the earth. They do. And across the expanse of the sky, they do. Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. 
And he gets over a little further and he says, listen, I made all that for food for you, which it is. Chickens, I'd be a bird. You say, you eat him? Yeah, we eat him. Do atheists eat chickens? He said, yeah, they eat them. What do they call them? Birds. I'm like, that's what God called them. Now, I've been asked in my comment section so many times I've lost count if I actually think I'm helping anyone or if I'm convincing any young earth creationist that they're wrong, to which I usually reply the same thing. I'm not trying to. I don't care. And I will tell you for why. Because in the case of people like Phil Robertson here and any other young earth creationist for that matter, there is no mind to change. They are all so consumed by fear of upsetting their God and getting a one-way ticket to hell yeah you know that place that religious people made up so they could keep control over true believers that you could get doc brown to take them right back to the beginning in his delorean and they would still claim that god did it right. And the funny thing is, especially in the case of Phil here, because he's talking about the English language, he's not once stopped and thought about what the word faith means. Because in simple terms, or in terms that a young earth creationist can understand, faith means believing something is real when there is no evidence to support it. It's November right now. All the water is coming out of them. The water is coming out of them. You say, what happens when they all start saying, put the water back in the ground, the water goes back in the ground. You'll see little streams flowing up in some of these hills that weren't flowing before then. All that water in the ground from the trees and the little creek starts flowing. You're like, where's that water coming from? A lot of it came out of these trees. Wow, just wow. When a tree goes dormant, it seals up its leaves and that massive amount of water being pulled out of the ground just stops. The stream starts flowing again because the major water thief, the tree, has stopped stealing it. The extra water isn't coming out of the trees, it's water that would have been sucked up and sent out into the atmosphere. But now it's just staying in the soil and flowing down into the creeks. It's not a reverse pump, it's a turned off straw. The Almighty made it all. You say that just happened to turn out that way? I just read you the Genesis account, and you're calling all these things the same thing God called them through Moses. <laughs> it's God saying you can run, but you can't hide. You know there's a power behind all this. I mean, that's almost poetic, but it's still hilariously bad at the same time. It's the linguistic version of a gotcha, but as we've established, calling a bird a bird has nothing to do with the divine decree and everything to do with cultural history. The scientific explanation for why things exist is called natural selection and geological history. Our current understanding of science says that the entire natural world, from the trees to the birds, didn't just turn out that way. They were formed by billions of years of natural processes like planet formation, chemical changes, an evolution every young earth creationist's favorite well that's another one in the bag duck dynasty's very own phil robertson proving once and for all that common sense isn't anywhere near as common as we've been led to believe don't forget to like the smash button before you leave thank you all so much for watching and i will see you in the next video love you bye out of everything that's on the internet this is the best thing Right, I'm not sure what I want to tell you today's joke because it's about Alice in Wonderland and I'm not sure what I want to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> I don't think so. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No, 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 no. It's never, ever, 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 ever going.